Good morning, glad to see so many faces here. This is awesome. I have not been to this event before, my first time here, and um, this is a great turnout. Um, I'd like to start just by kind of with giving some thanks. Um, Carl Hoverson, Hoverson Farms, this is an awesome event. Thank you so much for putting that on for us. Um, the field crew, Dean Peterson, Russell Benz, and all of his guys, you'll see their work. Hopefully you can come out to Inkster this afternoon and see their work. Uh, we certainly, uh, Gary and I, could not accomplish really much without them. Maybe we could sit in our offices and hang out, Gary, if we didn't have those guys, but that's about what we would get accomplished. So they are awesome. They do such great work um, and are the key to our success. I want to talk about, uh, Gary and Andy and everybody kind of covered our disease situation currently. I want to talk about a couple of things Soilborne, as Andy said, I want to talk about soilborne organisms this morning. And you may be seeing um, in your fields, we've heard from growers, uh, verticillium starting to take hold because of stress and also uh, some common scab issues uh, just from the dry, dry conditions this year. And so uh, we started a common scab project last year, myself with a cooperator at USDA ARS, um, Chris Clark. And so it, I don't believe, Gary, can, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think NDSU Pathology has had a real common scab project ever. Okay, so this is kind of our first research project in common scab. And Gary says he doesn't want to work on it because it's too hard to solve. So somebody conned the new girl into working on common scab. For some reason, I fell for it. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, with some encouragement. So anyways, we're looking at uh, the the pathogen population that we have in North Dakota, and as I said, nobody's really looked at that. And what we know about common scab is that variety resistance is very much related to the pathogen population. And so for all of you to, real, to, to know what you can plant, for us to help Susie to identify the resistance, and for us to look at um, management tactics going forward, we need to first know about our pathogen population. And so that's our first endeavor. Uh, we looked at a pathogen population, actually um, kind of got a hint about some funding from Nebraska, so we, we kind of used the Nebraska growers as our guinea pigs. Don't tell anybody that, any of you that might speak to them. Um, but we started a project there last year where we compared some PCR results, so quantification of the pathogen in soil, to um, disease, and we actually we got some very good results from that, and so now this year we have some funding to start working on that in North Dakota, and then also in, in combination with that we'll look at um, soil properties, physical and chemical soil properties, and the goal is to hope to relate all of those factors, the pathogen population, the soil physical and chemical properties, and um, the variety with disease incidents, so that you would have some ability to know, you know, what can I plant here, um, what should I stay away from, those sorts of things. And so that's, that's really our overall goal with common scab. Uh, like I said, I'm just learning common scab, it's new to me, and uh, so I have a great partner in the USDA that's, that's really leading, um, leading me and kind of teaching us through this effort. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is verticillium wilt, and that's, that's very familiar to me. I, I worked on verticillium wilt uh, for my PhD, and, but we're coming back to it. And it hasn't been cured in the last 10 years since I finished my PhD. So there's still opportunities. Um, we are, I'm, I'm very, very happy to, to, glad to join with Susie Thompson and um, Laura Shannon, and we're going to start really intentfully looking at resistance, and um, looking at resistance in, in Susie's breeding program, in Laura's material, integrating that into the, uh, Laura's new diploid breeding efforts, and, and some of Susie's diploid breeding efforts, and really um, kind of the three of us joining our efforts together, our expertises together, and um, really intentfully looking at how we can accelerate breeding for resistance to verticillium wilt. In addition to that, we continue to look at chemical management of verticillium wilt, as well as some um, cultural practices, some manures, and some of those sorts of things, planting dates, harvest dates, and, and, and such to, to really um, dig into more um, what we can kind of do in an integrated uh, practice as far as verticillium wilt is concerned and the management of that. Uh, my crew, I believe, has passed out a couple of handouts that 
go into those projects uh, in a little more detail as well as some other projects. Uh, and that's kind of just for your information, some of the things that we're doing uh, in addition to, to common scab and to verticillium wilt. Uh, this afternoon I'm going to talk about foliar diseases and so kind of as a, a, a little bit of a preview to this afternoon, uh, a little bit of early blight and a little bit of, of the work that we're going to do on, on brown spot as well. So uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, we're always looking for, um, you know, samples, uh, see what, see and hear what's happening on your farms and uh, what you have going on. Um, with that, again, just thanks. Thanks, Andy, and um, everybody else. Thanks for being here. And let me know. Please contact me any, any questions, problems, concerns that you have. So thank you. Mm -hmm.